Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Comic-Con Podcast, episode 12. We are recording this on March 25th, 2021. I am your host for this evening, Justin, a.k.a. Nemesis Prime. My man, Zach, is a little uh, busy this week out there doing some personal stuff. So I actually got someone here in the community that uh, I've been a big fan of probably for the past couple of years. He's a New Jersey native one of the comic book fiend club members the comic goon himself juan what's going on juan hey what's going on justin thank you so much for having me on man i'm uh, pretty pumped to be on here i uh, really really enjoy the podcast it's uh you guys have been killing it so i'm just glad to uh be a part of it here today thanks man yeah a lot of people in the comic book fiend club they uh, do support the comic-con podcast you know a lot of people are always commenting tagging us mentioning us you know, throwing jabs at us as well, which is always <laughs> nice. So we like here, uh, you know, we don't hold back. So uh, we got a full packed show this evening. Of course, we're going to talk about some stuff going on in the IG community. We want to know about you since you are part of the community uh, doing some stuff in the movie and TV news. Got some in indie stuff going out there that's going to be coming a film. We'll talk about that soon. Some DC stuff dropping this week. Some huge Huge stuff going on with Marvel Comics. And of course, rounding out the evening, we always talk about what are we currently reading. So let's kind of jump into our community section. Before we learn about Juan and his comic collecting, I do have a voicemail here uh, from the amazing Murfinator. And we did this a couple episodes back where both Zach and I kind of went over our origins of collecting. So let's kind of listen to Murph's origin. If you guys have anything that you want to send to us, send it to us either in a voicemail, right to the Comic-Con podcast, at gmail.com you could send it in a voicemail direct message on instagram and of course hope you guys are listening to us right here on spotify itunes or google podcast so let's hear what murph have to say about his origin story all right hey guys what's going on it's mike and uh i just uh, i don't know how many podcasts i'm behind but i just finished your origin stories when it comes to uh your collecting and uh, I think most of us in community have probably have a similar uh, story. Uh, I started in the late 80s, mid 80s, you know, like ASM 300-ish around. Um, continued to go back and, and buy up those back issues. And I, I probably stopped uh, 98 when I got married and uh, then continued on, um, you know, had children and so forth. And... 2013 ASM 700 comes out. I am actually in the dentist chair getting my uh, fucking teeth drilled and uh, oh, there's a curse. So that's a minus one on the star rating. Um, headline on CNN is uh, Spider-Man will die or Peter Parker will die or something. After my fucking teeth is uh, all squared away, I go over to the comic book store uh, in the same uh. plaza and it's um, Newberry Comics. Justin, you might be familiar with that store. It's heading your way. And um, I go over it and I buy it because it's a Wednesday, for Christ's sakes. Is that a cuss? To Christ's sakes. Uh, Lord's name in vain. But anyways, then I realized that I got a shit ton. Oops, fuck. Another cuss. Um, stuff to pick up. I got to go way back and... So 2013, today is 2021. Um, I've since completed, I only need 40 issues for the complete ASM run. Um, I, I got a straight shot run from, I think, 98, 96, something like that, all the way to what came out last week. So enjoying the content, guys. Um, keep, uh, keep chugging along. Do a good job. And uh, we'll fucking talk to you soon. Oh, God damn it, another fucking cuss. God damn it. What you You're always wrote in the reviews. Anyway, thank you, Mike, for that uh, amazing voicemail. It's always great to hear people in the community and their origin stories. Uh, I can remember when they did the Superior Spider Man and Dan Slot got so much hate mail, and people were going to say they're going to kill him. I was just like, I couldn't believe it. I remember I posted it on my Instagram or at the time, I think, Facebook page. I was just like, I can't believe they're killing Peter Parker over this. Well, do you remember where you were, Juan, when. Uh, Superior Spider-Man was announced. I do not, and I, here's why: I don't rec I don't read a ton of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, uh, that Spider-Man's not within my wheelhouse. I'm more like Fantastic Four. So like I remember where I was when when Johnny died, right? <laughs> like yeah. that that sucked. And then you know, but yeah, as far as like I, I don't, I can't recall when it happened. I remember hearing about it, and then I'm like, oh, that that sucks, you know. But yeah. I don't, I can't, I can't put a finger on where I was when that happened. Yeah, I wasn't reading Spider-Man at all either. I was definitely not collecting it. And then all, I heard about the news. I ended up getting those last couple issues leading up to issue 700 for when the death. And then I got Superior and I really liked it. I thought that was Dan Slott's, you know, probably his best run in this in his whole Spider-Man run. Uh, just taking over as Otto as Otto Octavius as the uh, Spider-Man. So, but that's a great origin story, Murph. So, you know, let's kick it to you, Juan. Tell us your origin story of, you know, when you started collecting, how you started collecting, what do you collect? So my, <clears throat> my uncle, Will Jr., he was like one of the, I want to say probably driving forces behind me, even like reading a comic book when I was younger. Uh, I remember... You know, he was into like video games and comics. So he was like the cool uncle. So we'd Mm -hmm. go to his house on the weekends and he'd pull out just like his long boxes and just start digging through. And he would start just like giving me books to read or whatever. And I remember he was really big into image comics, like when they first started. So like his main was like darkness. He loved the darkness. So I was reading a ton of darkness when I first, and I was a kid, so probably yeah. shouldn't have been reading the darkness, but <laughs> that that's kind of where I, I started. Um, and then I kind of, you know, I was in school, junior high school, high school. I didn't read as much. Um, I kind of got into like anime at the time. Uh-huh. Um, so I was watching like a lot of Fist of the North Star and shit like that. Like I really, uh-huh. stuff like that I really enjoyed. And then it wasn't probably seven eight years ago i started just reading comics again and um you know i started picking up fantastic four again uh and i just started really getting into um into into fantastic four and i started reading just anything that came out and then it was just a process of elimination so like i'd pick up you know fantastic four to read that you know i'd pick up x-men if i didn't like uh-huh. it i just wouldn't read it you know so it was just kind of uh finding what i wanted to read versus what i didn't what didn't catch my eye anymore uh-huh. um and then as we progressed i i started getting a little bit more into indie comics so um a few years ago i started get into the goon which uh, i think it's one of those comics that it doesn't take itself too seriously it's not very pc they Uh they they definitely eric powell really has a way of writing things where he's not he's not very pc but also in in the turn of a hat it could become a very serious book and kind of pull on heartstrings you know and and make you really sad and make you feel a range of different emotions um yeah, he's definitely he's some. It's a, it's a series that I've never read, and there there's different series, obviously, right? Yeah. Like because yeah. it's it's gone it's gone through like the Dark Horse run, and then there's all these different spinoffs that they've done. Right, and everyone and every everybody does it a little differently, right? It's not yeah. Al doesn't do he hasn't done everyone, right? No, he or, hasn't done everyone. It's it's mm-hmm. been different, mm-hmm. uh, different writers and stuff. But like his early stuff, and and then some he does a lot of like novel esque type you know writing Mm -hmm. so like he'll come out with certain storylines and they're very very good very well written and drawn of course Mm -hmm. um so i i do read a lot of that now um but yeah i i just started getting back into comics i went to my first comic con which was new york comic con and um you know i just had a great time being back in that culture i guess and uh i went every year since and then um you know, now I you're really into the Funko thing, right? You're now, huge into this Funko. Well, I've thing, always, right? I've always been into Funko, but it's not like Jen definitely a lot more. And Jen's Jennifer's <laughs> my wife. Uh, she's she she loves them, and she got me into them. But again, just like with when it comes to like my my taste in comics, I am very specific about what I want. As before, I used to just buy whatever. Mm-hmm. Same thing with comics. I used to just try to buy everything, right? Because yep. when I first started, I, I you know, I, honestly, I was like, oh, you know, there's there's money to be made here, guys, you know? And uh, mm-hmm. so I'd pick up every variant I could or whatever. And uh, 
as soon as I realized, like, damn, I'm spending so much money every week on comics, I figured, you know, it's time to uh, rein it in a little bit. And uh, so I started focusing more on on stories rather than just like pretty covers or whatever. Um, but yeah. So for me, I, I met my wife at New York Comic Con and then, you know, I, I engaged. I proposed to her the following year. And then we got married and then we went back to New York Comic Con because we we were meeting Mark Hamill, which uh-huh. is awesome. Uh, so it just when we got together, it just made our kind of passion for like comics and, and things like that increase even more. Because now we have somebody that is into the same things we are. So if I want to spend five hundred, six hundred dollars on a book, she understands why I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> My so, wife still doesn't get that. She just as long as. <laughs> When I post a book on Instagram that I'm trying to sell and she's like, someone's going to pay you a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars for this. And I go, yeah, she's like, why? I go, well, it's because it's the first (laughs) appearance of this character or the origin of this character. She doesn't understand it. (laughs) Right. And and but she does because she'll do the same thing. Like, I I know this is an audio podcast, but visually, Justin could see all the all these books up here. Those are hers. Like mm-hmm. I had nothing to do with that. She loves Batman. She loves anything in that universe, you know, mm-hmm. as opposed to me where I'm more like, uh, I really enjoy fantastic four. So I do collect a lot of fantastic four. I collect a lot of goon. I have some original art uh, figures, whatever it is, uh, you know, so I dabble kind of in, in bin it, right. But stuff that I have to like, so like fancy, I, I like teenage mutant Ninja Turtles, So I collect that, you know, I like GI Joe. So I'm collecting that mm-hmm. Marvel legends. So I'm collecting that. So it's very like, <laughs> It's very honed in now as opposed to like trying to collect everything that's catching out because you're you're fearing about missing out on something. Well, I feel like you're collecting everything because every time you post something <laughs> on Instagram, you're, you're I feel like you're all over the place because you're like there's Ninja Turtles one post and then there's Funkos and then there's G.I. <laughs> Joe. And I'm just like, where is this guy's like there's no there's no straight line. I, I get it. It's action figures or yeah. it's Funko Pops. But the action figures like for me, when I was collecting action figures, it was. I'm collecting like transformers and then right. I went down that entire road. Then like I would do the whole Ar- I would do only Arkham. So I did like the Arkham Asylum, Arkham uh, City, Arkham Knight. Like they did all those. I wasn't like going off on like a tangent of like, let me start venturing like, Oh, let me do he man. Let me do GI Joe. But I, <laughs> you're all over the place. And, and yeah. if you guys follow, uh, well, what's your Instagram? The comic goon. Okay. Uh, just so, underscores in between every word. All right. So it's the, the underscore comic underscore goon. Check him out. You know, he's got tons of stuff. He's always posting. Um, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful origin story right there for, you know, someone in the community. And, you know, before we kind of move up, move along, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, where, what part of what group are you in, which is a huge part of the comic book community. And I, I know a bunch of members. There's members that do, their own podcasts there's a youtube channel for the comic book fiend club instagram you know tell us you know give us a quick uh, synopsis of that uh so the comic book fiend club uh started five six years ago and uh it's grown to this multifaceted group of uh different chapters you know we have chapters in the north south east west midwest canada and internationally so it's over a hundred and something members um, they're just comic book collectors, to be honest, people who are into the same sort of things. You know, we have cool vests and the patches and a lot of people jokes and say we're a biker club where we, we don't we're try to represent ourselves as anything other than a, a comic book social club. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, to be real uh, here, it's it's you do. Some people do give us a lot of shit, but I and I don't understand why we 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 tend to try to want to help the community and uh, support as much as we can. So whether it's like, you know, raising money for charities, GoFundMes, we have um, comics for the military where we collect comics and we ship them overseas uh, uh-huh. to, to the men and women who are fighting for our country. Uh, there's so much that we we want, we want to give back, but a lot of people I think mistake us for people who we feel we're trying to be separate from the community when in reality we're we're a part of this community you know uh-huh. we never try to be anything other than that so you know again it's it's for me when i joined the club it was very um it was very exciting because i wanted to do more i felt like as a club we could do a lot more you know so we created a youtube channel twitter we we got more involved on instagram 
um, as far as like, you know, posting things and, and sharing things and, and really trying to um, help as many people as we can in whatever way. And I think we cultivated really good relationships. Like Justin was saying, you know, we, we try to be friendly with everyone and get along with everyone as much as possible. But, you know, sometimes the community just loves drama and stirring shit up, but that's, <laughs> that's just how it is, you know? And, uh, you know, a lot of times we, we have to turn the other cheek and, you know, remember like, Hey, like can't feed the trolls all the time, you know? And, yeah. um, Absolutely. For the, for the most part, we really have a good relationship with with you guys, you know, with the Lord. So those are the relationships like we really try to cultivate with people. And, um, you know, the club, we we're doing yearly enrollment. So uh, basically uh, in July, I believe enrollment's open. Uh, you submit a application via email uh, and then you answer a ton of questions and then it gets it gets sent off to whatever chapter or whatever state you're in. Uh, so it gets sent off to that chapter and then it gets reviewed and a vote takes place. And if you're voted in great, if you're not great, you know, there's been a lot of people that uh, my first go around, I did not get accepted. Mm -hmm. There's been people who's tried five times and haven't been accepted wow. and then get accepted. Yeah. So it's not, we always say it's not about the books you have. It's about, <laughs> it's about your passion for this. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that's the most important that for in itself is important as far as really being in, in this community is just your passion for, for comics and, and pop culture in general, like, and how well you get along with people and, and being drama free. And we mean mm -hmm. drama free, like drama is going to happen, but you're not going out there and screwing people out of books or money and things like that. So it's very important that we have that um, sort of vetting process when it comes to uh, accepting people. We want to make sure they're of good moral character. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, again, drama happens, but just don't be a scumbag and, and you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I, anybody who's listening to the show, you know, from my experience with the comic book fiend club, you know, I'm, I met Juan at Baltimore 2019. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I met him, but I was following him on Instagram for a while. Uh, you know, the other guys, Remy Grayson, you know, stampede battleholic, just to name a few guys. And I've been, there, there's probably so many more that I follow and I see all their posts. And a lot of these guys I met in person. And it was funny, I was following a lot of these guys forever. And then all of a sudden, you meet them in a show. And Baltimore was like my first show where I was really engaged in the community. And I met all you guys. All you guys were just hanging out. And it was just like such a different feel than just going to like New York Comic Con or, you know, Baltimore years before that or any of these other, you know, New Jersey based Comic Cons. And the fact that you guys are all together and like you said, yeah, you're you're always looking out for each other. You're you're all engaged. You know, I, I see tons of pictures with like you guys and the different vendors. And like you said, you're always trying to do something good for the community. I remember last year you guys there was supposed to be a show here in Jersey. There was a big sponsor, you know, not like a sponsorship, but a big funding that you guys were going to do. I yep. think it was the Hamilton down in Hamilton, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you know, that fell through because of uh, COVID, but you know, these guys, they are definitely a great community group. And, and like Juan said, if you're listening to this podcast, of course it's early enough when July, June, July comes around and you guys want to apply, you know, Hey, if uh, you apply and you get in on the first go around, that's awesome. If not, definitely check them out regardless. Follow them on Instagram. Check out their website. They always drop tons of knowledge on there. There's always like an artist spotlight, which is fun to read. And there's tons of guys who are just really fun to talk to here and there in the community, direct messaging that, you know, I do. So I, I really appreciate Juan coming on here and kind of talking about that in, in our community section. So thank you so much for that, Juan. Okay. Uh, let's kind of get on to some news. So, you know, bringing people on here, of course, we always, you know, talk about movie news. We talk about comic news. So it's going to be nice to hear someone other than Zach or myself, you know, talk about something. So let's kind of get into our movie and TV section. So this actually just dropped the other day. This is coming off of variety, uh, dot com. So Carrie, uh, fucking Nega. Funkinaga, as I'd like to call him, is going to be directing Tokyo Ghost film adaptation for Legendary. Now, if you guys don't know Tokyo Ghost, it was a t it was a series from Image that was done written by Rick Remender, and the artist was Sean Murphy. 
Now, Tokyo Ghost is set in the year 2089 when humanity has become fully addicted to technology. Hey, as we're right now, mm -hmm. as an escape from reality, it follows a story of peacekeepers Debbie Decay and Led Dent who work in the aisles of Los Angeles and are given a job that will take them to the last tech free country on Earth, the Garden Nation of Tokyo. So this was back in 2015, 2016. The series ran, it ran 10, 10 issues. Um, now, I'm not sure, Juan, if you've read this, but I'll kind of give, you know, my little synopsis of this series. I absolutely this was it was great. This was a series that I was totally on board with for two things. One, it was a time where anything that Rick Remender put out, I was buying if he whatever he was writing. I was absolutely going to be buying this series and Sean Gordon Murphy or Sean Murphy, however you want to you know call him. He's got that middle name. He was killing it. You know, he was killing it with the stuff that he was doing previously. And I'll kind of tease because that's going to be what I'll be talking about. What are we currently reading tonight? But uh, I, I was a big fan of this series. I was a big fan of even what he did with Scott Snyder and The Wake. But, you know, I am super excited to see this movie come about. And what's interesting about this is that this was put into play a few years ago. And him and Rick completely kept it quiet. You know, a lot of times nowadays, a lot of the news drops, these people, you talk about it, they get optioned and then someone kind of spills the beans or they say, oh, my comic book series. And they post it on, on the social medias. But what's interesting right. is when Sean Murphy just posted yesterday, he said that this happened a couple of years ago, but he kept, you know, he kept quiet. So have you read this or, you know, what are your thoughts on this uh, series? I, I've never read it. I'm going to now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know Rick Remender is a great writer, and I really enjoy Sean Murphy. I think that dude's stellar as well. Um, so I'm definitely going to add this to my reading list for sure. Uh, do you think as as a movie this will, you know, uh, the director for this movie, he's done a lot of other really great films. Uh, how do you think that it's going to translate to the big screen? I, I think this is going to be this is going to be the big indie push. Uh, on movies because you know we haven't really seen we've seen a lot of the indie stuff in the tv realm you know you got like the boys you have umbrella academy you have lock and key which are all non-superhero driven well i shouldn't say non-superhero driven with the boys mm -hmm. but they're they're more indie you know they're not like your mainstream superman batman spider-man captain america so i think this is going to be you know your first big push for like a indie movie and then, you know, depending on how well this does, you know, all these other series that have been optioned or there's a script somewhere and no one's talking about it or it's been shelved for whatever reason could really push these image books that we've, you know, seen over the years and really get that movie mo movie going. Because, you know, what have we really gotten that's big enough in image? You know, we have The Walking Dead, which is, you know, kind of coming to a close. We know somewhere in the world Spawn is coming to a movie. And, right. and there's all these other little things that, you know, people are talking about. But I think this one has, and especially with the world we live in today, like it is, it's it's 20, it's 2089 is the year, but we're so technology driven that I can feel it to be, it's very cyberpunkish, but it's also very uh, Black Mirror. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. To, I'm definitely excited for this movie at the, uh, when it comes out. Yeah, I'm definitely going to, going to read this because uh it just looks like uh the art stellar i'm looking at some of the some of the work now and um the story seems really good especially it's relatable now everything we're doing now is technology driven right work has uh -huh. shifted over to zoom so it has school and and everything else and it seems you know tiktok is probably one of the biggest platforms in the world and uh millions yeah. and millions of people just on this all the time so definitely relate probably a good time because it's so relatable yeah, absolutely. Definitely with the addiction of, of technology as, as it is. So uh, <clears throat> moving on to some uh, out of the indie realm and going into some DC news. So first up, we're going to be talking about somebody who just got cast in the Black Adam movie, which was I, I was completely blown away by this one. And this is all over this. Actually, this article is coming from people.com in the movie section. So Pierce Brosnan will be starring as Dr. Fate in Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam movie. Now, if you guys don't know, I mean, Pierce Brodden has been in a few movies here and there. I'm sure he's most well-known for being GoldenEye 007. But, uh, you know, he's going to be playing the Dr. Fate of Kent Nelson. 
and he's someone who we haven't seen really in a in a big role in the movies in a quite a while mm -hmm. and dr fate is someone who you know he's been in the cartoons but i i think it's definitely somebody who we have a lot of you know a lot of feet to be moving forward especially in this magic world that we're kind of moving into with dc comics so you know i'm, I'm gonna kick it over to you Juan. you know what do you think about this uh this casting for dr fate i'm not gonna lie i really like it i've always been a fan of uh pierce bronson and especially uh you know during like you said golden i was just really enjoyed him as an actor i know he's a little up there in age 67 years old mm -hmm. uh which is fine because again Dr. Fates mostly has a helmet on his head, so you don't have to, <laughs> to worry about him having to do anything too physical or crazy. Uh -huh. But I really, I when I saw that uh, he was cast, I went and just watched some YouTube videos, and I'm like, okay, I think he, he could really pull it off. Um, Dr. Fates just such an awesome character, too, and I think it's about time he... He appeared on the big screen, and I, I like that we're getting different characters that we haven't seen. We get so much Batman and Superman and, and Wonder mm -hmm. Woman. We're finally getting, you know, a Black Adam, and we're finally getting Doctor Fate. So I think it's going to be good. I think he's gonna he's gonna kill the role, and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. Where, if you know he's going to be in anything else, but I think it's a great casting. I really do, and I feel like The Rock definitely has something to do with that. I think he, you know, for sure helped push that through or whatever so yeah definitely wants kind of like an a-list actor to play these roles and um you know we already had we because we had the character of adam smasher he got announced you know who'll be playing uh that character and we do there's some rumors as far as hawk girl being in the movie and um isis uh as, as well for for that movie so you know i'm sure he's picking people that either he really wants to work with and and that's crazy you know dwayne the rock johnson working with you know, Pier, uh, Pierce Brosnan is, is really awesome. And it's just so funny. And I, I posted on my Instagram today, you know, first Silver Age appearance of Dr. Fate is Justice League of America number 21. And it's funny, I was going through all my books over the past couple of weeks, and I really was about ready to sell that book. So I was just like, oh, I was like, whatever. I was like, it's one less slab in the collection. I can make some money on it. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, this week they announced that Dr. Fate's going to be in a movie and i'm like well it looks like i'm holding on to it for a little bit longer <laughs> oh for sure that's how it is a lot of times with these movie castings like you're just right about to get rid of something and and boom it's gonna fly off um and pop off really well but yeah i, I think like i said the rock's been dying to do this movie forever now mm -hmm. i mean years literally so i'm sure he has a big hand in like making sure the movie picks and selects the right people for the right characters. So I'm going to have some faith in that. I really enjoy The Rock as well. I'm a huge fan. So I hope that this movie actually does really well because it has. Yeah. it's really going to have an amazing set of characters for, oh, the, absolutely. for the movie. We're going to be, we're going to see so much that has not been exposed in the DC universe. And I think, you know, this movie is definitely going to just push them forward and, and kind of get their, get the bad taste out of their mouth that everybody had for a while. And I'm sure he doesn't want to be a part of, you know, that, that lore that DC is just can't do movies. Well, right you know? So, uh, and we, we kind of talked about this a couple episodes ago, me and Zach, where we showed off, uh, we showed off a screenshot, and because it was part of the AT&T Investor Day. So, of course, yeah, Black Adam was on there. But another one of the movies that is coming out is Suicide Squad from James Gunn. Now, by the time you guys are listening to this, the trailer may already be out. But today, on March 25th, James Gunn posted on his Twitter that the Suicide Squad trailer is coming tomorrow, which is now today for you guys who are listening to this, uh, guys and girls out there on the 26th or 27th or any time past that. So let us know what you think about that. I'm definitely going to be checking out that trailer. We did have like a quick trailer. I believe I don't, can't remember if it was like last year or even at 2019's Comic-Con San Diego. They did kind of show like a little bit behind the scenes, but we haven't had an official trailer show. You know, we had that characters trailer, right? If yes, it was, the, it was the characters trailer where they announced each individual character is going to be, which is a <laughs> ton, a ton of people, which I'm sure five of them are going to die in the first like <laughs> 15 minutes, but they're there. I don't recall everyone, but there was some, you know, you had like polka dot man and, and like rat catcher, which I'm sure those guys are gone after the first 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I'm excited to see a brand new trailer. I think James Gunn did a phenomenal job on Guardians of the Galaxy. So I cannot see him not doing I could see him doing a better job 
than David Ayers did. Uh, you know, Zach talked about it on our Justice League Snyder Cut review. You know, the problem with the original Suicide Squad was that it had an end-all villain. It mm. wasn't like a mission-based movie. And that's what the Suicide Squad is. So what, are you, what is your take on this one? You know, what are you looking forward to in, you know, the Suicide Squad from James Gunn? I'm, I'm, I, I like James Gunn. I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, my biggest fear is that people are going to try to compare it to Guardians of the Galaxy when mm -hmm. you, you need to just let it be its own thing and see where it's going. Um, I think, again, it's a lot of characters, right? Yeah. So it's going to be hard. And he already said, like, you know, a bunch of people are going to get killed <laughs> off. And uh, I, first of all, the costumes in particular in this film, is they're great. I mm -hmm. mean, Peacemaker looks like a dork, but it looks it it looks it's it's really uh, he he really put a lot of work into it. You could tell, and he's very excited, and the cast is very excited for the film. Uh, I think it's definitely I, Suicide Squad. I, I the original one uh, with uh, David Ayer, the first mm -hmm. one, um, I enjoyed, but I did f have the same kind of opinion. It had such a just a powerful villain in the end, where it's just like uh, I don't, I didn't. I didn't like it as much. Uh, I saw where they were trying to go with it, but I didn't, I wasn't too into it. Mm -hmm. This one just seems like it's going to be an insane movie with a, because literally you're, you're following a ton of criminals around a mm -hmm. ton of maniacs around. So <laughs> it needs to be, it needs to be a little, little out there. It needs to be a little crazy. We need to see really. And do, what's it rated? Is it going to be rated R? I hope so. I hope so too. Cause I think that'll make a huge difference in, and how well this movie is, um, but it's it's one I've been looking forward to for a long time. I did enjoy the character breakdowns um, and uh, getting to see some of the the characters that are there. I thought you know having um, you know Harley. I'm glad Harley Quinn's still in it because I I really do like her um, as Harley Quinn. I think she mm -hmm. she really enjoys the role, and I feel when someone enjoys the role they're playing, they're they're going to put that extra effort in it to to make it be even better so but i'm interested and then you know we we all know that we're getting a peacemaker spinoff as well mm -hmm. so i'm curious to see what his character is like in the movie as well but i think it's going to be a fun movie i think it's going to be fun i don't expect it to be you know like a, a totally serious movie like just as league was or something like that i think it's going to be more of a like a a buddy adventure like with just a bunch of crazy people and i think it's going to be a very fun movie to watch yeah definitely I, I i totally agree with you and the cast is is completely i wouldn't say it's completely different from the first one because you do have a lot of returning cast members of course marco robbie's coming back you have the guy who played uh rick flag amanda waller coming back but now you're adding people like idris alba's gonna be in there i think he's mm -hmm. playing like blood sport um jay courtney is coming back as Captain Boomerang, which is nice, but then you have like Michael Roker's coming in. Mm -hmm. I know Sylvester Stallone is in there for maybe a small role, big role. <laughs> like you said, Peacemaker, John Cena, you know, is you know doing his acting chops. He's getting his spinoff. You got comedians like Pete Davidson's going to be the be in there. Uh, Taco with TD is going to be in there as some type of yeah. character. Sean Gunn. I, there's so many people. <laughs> I mean, you're getting King Shark head. too, which is yeah. incredible. It's probably one of my favorite parts of Har the animated Harley Quinn show. It's just so good. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's perfect in the animated. <laughs> but uh, you know, as we said, you know, we're we're hoping that trailer is, is is really good. We'll definitely be talking about it next week on episode 13. But uh, if you're listening to this, you know that it's out there by now, which is really nice. So that's kind of our TV and news section for the evening, kind of moving on to some comic book stuff. So last year at the end of 2020, uh, DC Comics kind of made a big time move where they split off of from Diamond Publications as far as how to get their distribution. And they went with Lunar. And over the past couple of months, you know, five, six months when they, you know, went away from Diamond, a lot of the retailers said it was it was good and bad. The pros, a lot more of their product is coming in not damaged, which is awesome. Right. Uh, the only problem with dealing with Lunar is you can't really talk to somebody. That's the hardest thing. Like there's no, you don't have a direct person that you can call up and say, you know, here's my rep and this is, you know, oh, I have damages on X, Y, and Z. 
it's kind of just like a phone number. I know in the beginnings, there was a lot of issues with payment and some people weren't getting like their first week of uh, DC from, from uh, Lunar, but you know, it, it's, it's worked its kinks out and I'm sure it's always something that's, that's changing. But here, it, this just dropped today on March 25th and this is on CBR's website. Marvel teams up with Penguin Random House for direct market distribution. So Penguin Random House has entered into exclusive multi-year partnership with Marvel Comics to handle direct distribution of their Marvel titles. So this is something that's going to be happening, that's going to be taking into effect in October. Uh, solicitations will start probably the end of May, if not June. But Marvel's now getting away from Diamond. So now... Mar uh, Penguin will distribute all new Marvel comic books and graphic novels direct to the market via their publishing distribution house. This is huge news in 2021 because we just had obviously a huge big player in DC Comics doing this last year, changing over to Marvel. This year, we're having Marvel Comics, one of the top three, just saying bye bye to Diamond. Juan, what do you think about this? That to me, it's wild. I've, I'll be completely honest. I, I didn't like that Diamond had such a hold of mm -hmm. distribution for such a long time. Uh, I know someone personally that, and you know this person too. Uh, he he hated Diamond. I mm -hmm. mean, he had tons of issues with damages and um, even just ordering things. Sometimes it was just such a hassle. Um, and he always said that the the monopoly that they had was not good for business it, mm -hmm. at all. So I know he's kind of glad that this is happening. It's huge news, honestly. Um, I was reading there was a uh, retailer by the name of Brian Hibbs. He said I can purely uh, he said I can't say purely as a private individual that Diamond has for a long time been unwilling or unable to modernize and support and grow the biz as needed for a healthy direct channel. So I think. You know, when COVID first hit, you remember they weren't doing anything. We couldn't mm -hmm. get books. And then DC decided to kind of just branch off. And then now you see Marvel's doing it here. So I think I think it's the right move as far as what happens now with Diamond. Who knows? Um, but I think it's it's the right move for them. Uh, I do wonder if it's going to change. Are we still going to get comics on Wednesdays for, for Marvel? Because remember when DC left... People mm -hmm. start getting their comics on Tuesday. Yeah. So, like what's going to happen as far as as a retailer too? like, how are the incentives going to work out now? How's the cost going to work out now? Um, you know, even now with some some retailers that I've seen, they don't always get their books on time anyway now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just like being away from Diamond. But um, I don't know. I, I hope this is the right move. Um, I know that, you know, it's it's. It's been they've had that strictly since like 1995, 97 or something like that. Yeah, ever since They're Heroes World went out of. They, so yeah, that's where it used to go. Was Heroes it's, World? It, it's a huge move. So hopefully it works out for them, you know. And uh, and and you know, I never want to see people losing work or anything like that. So hopefully, um, Jeppy can you know move on and figure something else to do that you know will help support his employees and his families and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think it's it's important because one, uh, you know, hopefully with this distribution is, you know, maybe we'll get better card stock or uh, on uh, Marvel printings, who knows. <laughs> but I, I think what's interesting and and I love and I've heard this from a lot of retailers and store owners from for DC Comics is, you know, they appreciate the quality that they get in, like I said, their DC Comics, their incentives, they come in, you know, they come in a bag and a board, you know, Diamond you got a one in 20 a one in 10 one in 25 one in 50 or even a one in 500 they barely put them things in bags and boards it's just slapped in the box with the remaining issues and it's a luck of the draw like how the condition is going to be at least like with lunar they were giving you you know a nice bag and a board for the variant so it, it, it came in there so maybe with this you know you'll get quality people who actually care about their job because i also feel like that's a problem with diamond is like people just don't care about their job and they're just taking you know 25 copies of this week's amazing spider-man throw it in the box and taking uh you know 25 issues of black panther turn it around stomping it right right on top of that and it just close it up and all right let's ship it out they're not really looking at how they're putting it in there they don't care about if it think it's a dog ear or whatever so 
I, I, this is huge news. This is absolutely huge news for the comic book industry. I'm sure there's going to be some hiccups in the road, just like with DC and Lunar. But I think once it kind of gets rolling, I, I think Penguin House, uh, Penguin Random House, is going to be a, a big player in the market for uh, Marvel Comics. Oh, for sure. I think I think they they this is not a decision that was rushed. I think this was something that they really took their time try to, and, and again, it's not dropping until October. So there's still time to work out and iron out a few things. And hopefully, like I said, it's, it's better for our retailers and our mom and pop comic book shops. So that way they can stay open and uh, get some good books in, in uh -huh. good shape. You know, I've been there. I've been there when, you know, my buddy opened up his diamond box and, Books are just everywhere because there's nothing. There's just, it's just it's thrown into an empty yep. box. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't. When we ship out a book for someone, mm -hmm. even if it's one book, we we make sure that hey, it's gonna get there the same way I you seen it in pictures. Yep. Dime is just like whatever, toss it in the box, and then we'll send it out. So, I think not. I think not being able to take care of your clients and and making sure that things got to you whole really ends up hurting them in the butt now especially mm -hmm. now that there's more options yeah absolutely and you know i know this from because i used to work at a comic shop for a while you know sometimes you'd order that one in 500 variant or one in 100 variant and either a it comes in damage sometimes it doesn't even come in so mm. if it does come in and it's damaged then it's just like well you know i just ordered 100 copies for this variant to sell it at a premium and now it's like i can't sell it at that premium and if they don't replace it then you're stuck with all these other comics because maybe you may not be able to sell the other ones so that's right. the whole point of having those incentives and it's going to be such a change that i don't even know it's just it's going to be a rude awakening for diamond come october when and especially for retailers because now they're going to be ordering from three sites you're going to have to go to lunar for your dc stuff you're going to have to go to penguin house for your marvel stuff and you'll still have to go to diamond for everything everything underneath the sun so all right we'll but see. yeah uh, i'm i'm excited and i'm also scared for retailers but that that just dropped today so i thought that was huge news here on the on the podcast and let's kind of round out the evening, of course, with our comic book reading. What are we currently reading this week? So, of course, as we talked earlier about Tokyo Ghost and Sean Murphy, I kind of was going through my my Sean Murphy books, you know, looking for because I posted on Instagram that I had, you know, I had the full set on uh, Tokyo Ghost, which I, I loved the entire series. I had all cover A's and B's for that 10 issue run. But there was another series that Sean Murphy did prior to that, that he actually did both the script and the art which was called punk rock jesus and it's really interesting this was a series that came out in 2012 and it was only six issues it was six any mini series and it was at a time where i was only reading marvel and dc it was probably my when i got back into reading comic books in 2011 because of dc's new 52 i was only reading you know marvel dc and, and transformers and i kind of wanted to get into this indie realm and somebody got me into saga and then i kind of moved into something and i was like punk rock jesus i was like this seems interesting so if you guys don't know punk rock jesus is basically a six issue miniseries like i said it's about a company who basically creates this thing called the j2 project and what they do is they create a clone of jesus christ from the dna of the shroud of the, uh turin the Turin. And he's raised on an island. It's kind of, kind of almost like a uh, a Truman Show type of thing where he's constantly being monitored. He has a bodyguard. But what happens is, uh, I don't want to spoil too much of the, the six-issue miniseries, but of course, like I said, it's called Punk Rock Jesus. He rebels. He ends up you know, becoming like a punk rocker and starts a band. And there's this whole, this whole love and hate Pol political stuff that's going around because of course a lot of people love him because he's it's like the second of coming of jesus but then there's all these zealots who are very scared of it because is this really jesus christ so um it's a really interesting read again it only went six issues sean murphy did not only the interiors the covers but of course he wrote it it's very interesting because it's in black and white and it's probably one of the only black and white storybooks i've ever liked because I'm not a big fan of the original Walking Dead. Uh, I've been rereading The Walking Dead now that they've done this deluxe with the colors. But I highly recommend trying to go pick this up. Uh, like I said, Punk Rock Jesus came out. It was a Vertigo title, which is really interesting. So it wasn't even like Image or Scout right. where it was 
you know, a self-published type of thing. He was able to do this, you know, for DC Comics under the Vertigo uh, byline. And uh, you could definitely find the trades, and I'm sure you can find the six issue miniseries on eBay for cheap, or you know, maybe even find in your local comic shops into their set bin. So that's my what are we currently reading book this week? Juan, this is your first time here on the podcast. What are you currently reading? Uh, so I've been reading The Department of Truth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so <laughs> I I enjoy reading a good conspiracy. I don't necessarily believe conspiracies but i do mm -hmm. enjoy reading a good one um james tinian is just a great writer and basically the department of truth is uh not to give too much away because it's, it's still you know a fresh book mm -hmm. uh there's a character he's a conspiracy theorist and then he realizes through something that happens that all these conspiracies are true from <laughs> from like jfk to reptilians like and that's where this book really takes place it's just anything conspiracy theory and the department of truth is responsible for like covering up all these true conspiracies and making it seem like it's, it's just such a great read for someone like me. Who's like, you know, always dug into like the JFK conspiracy or, you know, reading stupid shit about the reptilians or whatever. Not that I necessarily believe it, but again, it's, it's to me, I, I take it all as fiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Department of Truth is very heavy into that and has some really wicked covers and really mm -hmm. crazy art. And uh, just all of it is so good. So uh, that's what I've been reading. I know it was, you know, there's talk about a show or a movie or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, so it's def it definitely worth the read before you get any of that, you know, on TV or in the, on the big screen. Go pick up the book. That's currently what I'm reading and, and heavily enjoying. Okay, a lot. that's that's really good because uh, you know both Zach and I, I believe we're both. I'm not reading, and I, I'm pretty sure Zach's not out. And we've we've kind of talked about this in in private chats, and I'm not sure if we if we talked about this here on the show. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. I've tried to read it. Unfortunately, I can't get past the art, and it's just something mm -hmm. that you know, uh, you know, the artist uh, Martin Simons, I believe, is the artist. Mm -hmm. I just can't. I just can't get into it. But now, is each story art? Because I know they're they're what are they on like seven or eight, maybe. Yeah. Is each story arc a different um, story it's, arc? Is like a different conspiracy or? Yeah, it's like it's just different conspiracies as you okay. read along. You'll read, you know, different things. Some of them are very real world stuff. You know, I, I won't sit here and mm -hmm. act like it's all like silly stuff, but it's, it's a lot of real world stuff, you know, like you know, mass shootings and, and things like that, you know, that are very real world today. And uh, so it's, 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 takes place in different you know it's kind of i don't know if you've read haha -ha yet uh, oh yeah i've been reading yeah that was one kind of the first of, books we talked about here. like that it's different mm -hmm. um different stories within that realm but okay. um yeah you're right about the art the art at times could be could get you dizzy uh mm. but the story <laughs> itself is it's really really good yeah and T tinian's been killing it on everything that he you know he's been doing for dc and for boom and I image like he he's all over the place uh, you know with Department of Truth, you got something is killing the children. He had his detective run. Yeah. Uh, he's he's just all over the place. He's a busy guy, writing everything, keeping all these worlds together. And you know, with the news, the Department of Truth is going to be a you know TV series or movie, whatever it's going to be. And it's only a couple issues in, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, I you know I appreciate you you know talking about that because I, I didn't know too much about it, and you know I. I vaguely know about it of course because every couple weeks they're throwing out a new variant it sells out and uh, yeah. <laughs> people are posting about it and i knew about the news but but that's really awesome so if anybody's out there and wants some stuff to read uh department of truth i know like i said is only on seven they do have the first trade punk rock jesus is a completed series six issue mini series you can very good it's you read good. that yeah, it's very good. Um, one of uh, one of our buddies, Tom, he uh, he was on a on a different show, the Grail Keepers uh, podcast, mm -hmm. and he mentioned he was just showing off. A, he had gotten a, a trade done, and uh, he's like, "You you need to read it," and I did, and it's it's pretty good. I really liked it too. So nice, yeah. yeah. See, and that's what it is. You know, we we like bringing these different formats here to to everybody who's out there listening. You know. Give you something new to read if you're not reading all the current stuff you know try some old stuff it's a quick six issue mini and y you never know you know maybe you'll be following sean murphy stuff because he's been killing it with all the batman white knight curse of the white knight stuff so 
He's doing the Harley Quinn one right now. So it's really awesome to read all of his stuff. So uh, that's episode 12 is in the books, everyone. Um, shout out to Juan. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, before we end the evening, why don't you throw out every place where anybody can find you and uh, let them know who you so are. I'm you. On Instagram, I'm at The Comic Goon. Uh, Twitter, at The Comic Goon. On YouTube, at The Comic Goon. Really easy. <laughs> Just straight, <laughs> straight across our, every platform. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, uh, you know, I'm always up for a chat. So feel free to get DMs and, you know, let me know. You know, if you have any questions about the club or any questions about, you know, my fascination with fucking restoring the Snyder cut and <laughs> that means the Snyder verse. And uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Juan, thank you so much. Uh, thank Volzac you. and I appreciate you for really coming on and being my co. I appreciate you for coming on and being my co host for the evening. Uh, definitely check out, guys, like I said, the Comic Book Fiend Club on Instagram as well, their YouTube channel. They actually just did a, a review of the Snyder cut on their YouTube channel last weekend. And also, of course, if you guys have not uh, checked out the Snyder Cut Justice League review that Zach and I just did this past week, definitely go check that out. Of course, if you're listening to us on iTunes, make sure you give us a follow, leave us a five-star review and some comments, follow us on Spotify. Anybody else who's checking out on our Google podcast, and I have been uploading some of the older episodes on our YouTube channel, but you could always find us here on the platforms for podcasts first. And I am Justin, my man Juan, a.k.a. The Comic Goon in New Jersey. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me, bro. Take care. Bye.